I've worn 18 different fitness trackers over the last few years, and today I'll share what I've learned and my thoughts on every single one. But first, why fitness trackers? I initially got interested in fitness trackers when I got the Apple Watch. I wanted to see my heart rate, how many calories am I burning, how long are my workouts, how fast and far am I going? And ever since then, there's been a whole bunch of different fitness trackers that I've explored and experimented with. The biggest thing I've learned is every wearable is wrong, but some can be helpful. So I won't talk about data accuracy because most of these wearables are going to be inaccurate, but their data can be helpful in terms of understanding your trends and behaviors over time. And as long as as this fitness tracker is driving positive lifestyle behavior change, then I think it's worth it. But if at any point it starts to increase your stress and anxiety about life, take it off, stop wearing it, sell it. I'll start with my favorite. I'm wearing the Apple Watch Ultra on a day-to-day -day basis right now, but I do have the Apple Watch SE and the Apple Watch Series 8, all great watches. The thing I love about Apple Watch is it feels like an iPhone on your wrist. Yes, it has a screen, notifications, and you can customize all these features, but it allows me, especially with the cellular, to disconnect from my phone and go about my day, whether it's to the grocery store or on a run, and still feel like I'm safe and connected to the outside world. The Apple Watch Ultra has dual GPS, so distance and pacing is more accurate than these other two. But for the most part, they have great heart rate monitors and having a display to show what your heart rate is, your time and distance is very valuable when you're working out. If you've never had an Apple Watch, I highly recommend the Apple Watch SE. If you're a power user, go with the Ultra. I think the dual GPS, the better battery life and the action button are extremely valuable when it comes to the Apple Watch Ultra. The thing I don't love about the Apple Watch is having to charge it every single day, but it's become part of my habit. I try to charge it when I wake up after I sleep and I try to charge it right before I go to bed. In terms of power, power and use cases, the Apple Watch covers the most amount of things. My next favorite is Garmin. I recently got into Garmin watches when I started running more. I guess most runners typically wear a Garmin, still Apple fanboy, but I do love the Garmin. The insane battery life on this watch, I think it's like 25 days on the standard mode that I got it with, is absolutely insane. I don't have to charge it. This little flashlight on the Garmin watch is super valuable, but the GPS is really good. The distance, the pacing, the large screen, and having solid buttons, especially for running, there's multiple buttons and being able to maneuver the watch without having to look at it is extremely valuable. If I had an Android phone, I would probably go with a Garmin watch and if I had an iPhone I'd go with the Apple. But if you're someone who doesn't like screens there are some better options. For example the whoop strap. So this is a device I've been wearing for a couple years now and I do love it. I love the fitness tracking as well as the sleep and recovery features. If this is your only fitness tracker you do have to start and stop your workouts on your iPhone or add them later. This is probably the best set it and forget it fitness tracker because I can just put it on and it's always sampling my heart rate throughout the day. The battery lasts around four days and the charger just slides right on and it charges and it has a lot of sleep and recovery tools that I also like using. That video is coming out soon. But having it kind of hidden on my armband or wearing it in my shirt or underwear makes this a great fitness tracker that's pretty much invisible. The second no screen option is the Aura Ring. This is a decent fitness tracker. It'll do outdoor runs, cycling, walks, and it'll get your basic heart rate data. You do need to start and stop on your phone as well as have your phone nearby for the GPS information. But if you're someone who's just an average user and wants to just start tracking your workouts, the Aura Ring is a great option which provides a whole bunch of other sleep features as well. But if you're not a land creature, more of a water creature, these are the form swim goggles. Yes, most of these watches will track your swimming, but this is probably the best one because it's built exclusively for swimming and it has a little heads up display. So when I put these goggles on, I can see my time, my heart rate zones, and it even has a little slot right here where I can put a polar heart rate monitor right on my forehead. And having visual data and tracking all of my swims as well as the different strokes that I'm swimming is so powerful when it's built into these smart goggles. But to be honest, I don't swim as often as I used to, but I do use them every time I'm in the water. Next are the ones that I'm not the biggest fans of, but they can be really valuable for some of you. The Coros watch. If you just want to focus purely on running, this is a great watch. The heart rate and the distance and pacing are somewhat okay, but it's extremely cheap, it's extremely light, and the battery lasts forever. So if you're looking for something to just track your runs, this is probably one of the best watches out there. And then if you wanna upgrade the accuracy of distance and pacing, you can get the Coros Pod that goes with it. These in combination are great if you just want like a running watch. It does have some other smart features, but it's specifically built for running and it's so light. And also Kipchoge uses this watch, so if you wanna feel cool, that's another fact. Next is the Google Pixel Watch. This is neat because it's always tracking your heart rate. So very similar to the Whoop Strap, and this has cellular built in, which a lot of watches do not. And if you use Google Fi, my link is below, you'll get a free cellular plan on your phone and your watch. But that's exclusive to having a Google Pixel phone and a Google Pixel watch. I've also tried a Fitbit and I think both of these devices are very similar. If you're trying to find the Google Pixel version of an Apple Watch, this is probably the closest thing. It looks like a nice watch. It's clean, it's pristine. It gets the basic features of running, but it doesn't have dual GPS or as many of the workouts as some of the other watches do. I'm hoping maybe in generation two, they'll improve this watch greatly. But if you are an Android user, I'd probably go Garmin if you don't need the cellular. Next is Jeff Bezos. This is is the Amazon Halo. It's very similar to the Whoop Strap in terms of not having a screen. It is much cheaper. They also have a Halo View that does have a screen. I think this is a relatively interesting option because of the price. And there are microphones on it, so there is like a tone feature, which I thought was interesting to understand like how are you speaking in your tone throughout the day. Some might view that as creepy and some might view that as interesting, but it does give you kind of like a fitness score. It tracks your heart rate. And if you are someone who gets distracted by screens, it's always nice to have a tracker that has no screen. So if you don't want to pay the high price of Whoop, this is probably your next best alternative. Just note Jeff Bezos is on the other line. Jeff? 
Jeff Bezos, we still on for coffee tomorrow? The Samsung Galaxy Watch. I actually haven't ever worn this watch. Samsung, do you want to send it to me? But if you're in that ecosystem, I think it could be interesting. They do have a new body fat scanning tool, which has been shown to be somewhat accurate. Seems intriguing, but I'm an iPhone user, so it's very hard to switch. Next is the Polar Chest Strap. This can integrate with your phone to get probably the most accurate data. But even then, this is a consumer device, so everything is probably inaccurate. But it'll get you the closest thing. I love having this when I connect it to my Apple Watch, but you can also have this purely with just your iPhone. It is bigger and it can get uncomfortable. I do have a weird shaped body. So sometimes when I get really sweaty, this will start to slide down. But for most people, this should fit really well. Just make sure it's tight. And it's a great way to get really accurate heart rate data. And Garmin has an alternative. This is their version of it. For both devices, you can start it on your phone and then it'll track your heart rate when you disconnect from your phone. And then it pulls and downloads that data later on. Garmin does have some extra features. So when this is connected to your Garmin watch, it'll get like cadence, vertical oscillation, and a whole bunch of other data points. So recently I've been wearing this, connecting it to my Garmin watch. Whereas before I used to connect the Polar one to my Apple watch. And it also has a feature where you could wear this all day to track your data, your steps. But I don't know if you want to be wearing a chest strap all day. But that is also an option. Now, the chest strap heart rate monitors aren't the only ones that you can buy. If you want something that's a little more simple and easy to put on, there are ones that you can wear on your forearms and bicep. This is the Polar OH1 Plus, I think. And you can connect these heart rate monitors to your phone and be able to just get your heart rate data into your phone if that's valuable for you. I found the best fitness trackers are the ones that have a screen so I can see my live heart rate while I'm working out. So if I'm trying to do zone two training, I want to make sure I'm staying within that heart rate zone. Or if I'm doing any kind of VO2 max training, I want to make sure I'm hitting those peak heart rate zones. Next is the Garmin Running Pod. This is another tool that connects to your Garmin watch and it will get you some more data that you might not get on the Garmin. It adds like vertical oscillation, cadence, some of the information that you get just raw from the Apple Watch itself. Probably not interesting or valuable enough for most people. But that's not the only pod. There are some running pods that you can put on your shoes. This one's by Stride. This is Koros. This only works with Koros. This works with any other watch as well as just with your iPhone. These are very interesting because they use accelerometers to get increased accuracy of your distance and pacing. The Stride one has some really neat features in terms of power. I'm recently just starting to use it, but I think if you're willing to invest the time of putting this on your shoe right before you go out to run, it can be valuable to get more accurate distance pacing data as well as doing better zone two training. A lot of the watches do provide very similar data, but I think what these can do is provide more accuracy in terms of distance and pacing. Now this is all the hardware. There are some software pieces that I really love about fitness tracking. If you have the Apple Watch, there's an app called U-Race. When you're doing a running race, you can actually use this to be able to set your mile marker. So in case the Apple Watch is a little bit off, it'll readjust your pacing as you go. Google Fit, Google Google actually provides a really interesting app that pulls data from Apple Health and just makes that information look absolutely gorgeous. It's probably the best fitness app on iPhone, even though it's made by Google. Zones. This is a great way to see your heart rate zones based on how much training you've done in that zone. And then Health Fit. This allows you to take your health information from one app and push it into another. Next are like personal training apps. I love Future Fit and Copilot. Those are great for Apple Watch personal training apps. If you want to have a coach that's going to give you a program, the program pops up on your watch, you just follow the instruction and then you work out. These are two great apps that I love. But overall, buying a fitness tracker isn't going to make you fit. The most important important thing is lifestyle behavior change. Are you working out? Are you being consistent? My biggest recommendation is start easy. Make it as easy as possible. Do like five minute walks every day. Do 10 minute runs. Whatever it is that's easy for you, be consistent with it and show up every single day. There's no reason to push it and go all out. You want to minimize injury and just build a consistent habit for the rest of your life. The value that I see in fitness trackers are seeing the data and trends over time. So if I have a very specific thing I'm working on, the fitness tracker can help guide me in that direction. And I love the rings on the Apple Watch and having this slight sense of dopamine when I'm trying to achieve a certain goal. So if I need that break certain number of calories or stand for a certain hours in the day. Having a fitness tracker or an app that kind of visually guides you and maybe inspires you to get closer to that goal can be really helpful. You don't want it to be overwhelming and you don't want it to be too easy, but you want it to be just a little bit ahead. So that way it kind of nudges you and gets you excited about achieving that goal. If you haven't yet, go watch my video where I bought 22 sleep trackers linked right here.